It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. Hey, we've got a great podcast for you today. We're going to talk about estate planning mistakes when you're trying to leave a legacy for your loved ones. We're going to break down some of the more common estate planning mistakes you need to avoid that Bob and I encounter all the time. We're going to talk about tough conversations. Sometimes you have to have uncomfortable conversations to ensure your financial plan stays on track. We're going to discuss some of these more critical conversations you need to be having around your money, along with financial propaganda. There's a lot there in the news, the media this past week that you need to avoid. Everything from trade war tariffs to holiday shopping. We're going to break it all down for you, talk about what's going on in the economy, make sure you stay on track for your path to financial independence. You know, Once you have your income plan covered for retirement, you have everything set up, the other important component you have to start to consider is your estate plan. And I thought we could discuss some of the more common estate planning mistakes that you and I see on a daily basis when we're working with clients and potential clients. Yeah, right. That's a great point because you know when it comes to estate planning, I think the biggest mistake, you know, it's not really a mistake. I'm just going to call it outright denial is the cost of health care. Yes. And it's one of these things where we see financial plans. We know, okay, I've got my income covered. But what if you had like $250,000 have to come out of your account for nursing home, medical expenses? What does that do to your lifestyle? How does it impact it negatively? Again, right? People are in denial. They're going to tell you that, uh, yeah, that applies to everybody, but not me. But of course, when we look at the statistics, what percentage of people over 65 are going to need long-term care, right? What do you think? It's a, it's a pretty staggering number. I'm going to say it's something around 30, 40%. 70%. 70% wow. of you over 65 will need long-term care. Now, how many do you think, what percentage over five years are going to need long-term care for five years, right? Or more? I'm going to say maybe 50% at that point. Well, it's 30% of that 70. So good guess on both ends. But nonetheless, you're like everybody else. You're in denial. People don't think that's going to apply to them. It's a lot of money. you got to plan for it. The other thing we see, too, all the time, and it's just a simple thing, is not updating the beneficiaries on all your different accounts. You may have had a will put in place like, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. We always joke about it, but you know that brother-in-law you don't really like now is still the executive of your estate. If you look at your IRA beneficiaries, which are not covered by your will, you have people getting that money that you might not want to have receiving that money. See, you're very lucky. You have a father that loves you. He said, I updated that <laughs> stuff every year to make sure you didn't have that evil brother-in-law or uncle you know, as your guardian or your custodian. But uh, not everybody pays that much attention. And we're finding that's a big problem when we update your estate plan on an annual basis. Yes. You really want to make sure that you have all that stuff updated. So it's been about a decade. And you know who you are out there. That's most of you, by the way. Don't be ashamed that you don't have a state plan, but you've got to get that in place. And you know what, Ryan? It's not, it's not like the old days, right? The old days, you had one IRA. So you had one beneficiary for him to check. But you know, my generation, your generation, we changed jobs a lot. And we did a lot of rollovers. We did Roth conversions. So you might have a 403B, a 401K, an IRA, IRA rollover, a Roth, a Roth IRA. You might have two or three IRAs. I mean, your spouse might have an IRA. I mean, there's just things all over the place that you need to have one place to put that. And that's where I think our 360 financial portal is a huge benefit to everyone. Yeah, it's just utilizing technology just to make sure you have everything in one place so you can view it. To your point, Bob, there's so many moving parts, but you want to keep on top of everything. And that's where consolidation can be really, really beneficial as well. Because the other thing is you have all these different accounts in different places. Well, you're getting billed like they're these small accounts, which means higher fees. So there's just so many advantages to start to consolidate assets and also knowing where those assets are going to go from an estate planning perspective. So right, that's just two ways, right? Two ways you could end up draining your estate. Number one, not you know accounting for long-term care. Or secondly, not making sure things are titled properly. But 
you know, what are some of the ways that you can cover these long-term care expenses? How can you prepare for that? What are some of the things you can do? Well, insurance is always an option. It's an expensive option, but you want to look at your long-term care options, especially if you're in your 50s. That's where premiums tend to be more reasonable. You know, in some cases, it's like not an all or none proposition. Maybe you want to self-insure for some of it, depending on how many what you have in assets, and some of it you can use an insurance policy that can help as well. And depending on you know how much you've accumulated, in some cases, self-insuring is the cheapest option, but you just need to run some kind of financial projections to figure out what's best for you. I think what you have to keep in mind, Ry, is that uh, you, know, you could deplete your assets, but Medicare doesn't cover long-term care, does it? The only thing that covers long-term care is Medicaid, and that means you've got to be completely broke. I don't mean you know broke like I was in college. I'm talking about completely broke in order to take advantage of Medicaid. That's not the most palatable option. So that's why you really need to start to plan for these things, figure out what's going to fund some of these long-term care costs potentially in retirement, which can be a big, big deal. Another big estate planning mistake, Bob, that we see all the time is failing to take steps to avoid conflict and potential litigation among heirs and family members. That's why it's so critical to be clear about what your intentions are with your money when you're not on God's green earth anymore. You know, I think that's the biggest disservice that uh, you do to your own children is you don't give explicit directions. You know, I have three children. Most of our clients have a couple of children. It's amazing. You have three kids from the same gene pool and they're 100 percent diametrically opposed in personality and strategy and thinking. So you could have one strong personality that's going to make it miserable for the two that aren't as strong. That's right. So you have to consider who the trustee is going to be. And hopefully it's me in our case, Bob. I love Chris, but we know who the smarter son is. I digress. <laughs> <laughs> the other well, it thing depends be- on my. It depends on when I get this holiday season for a present that, that will determine who's going to be the trustee and and who's going to be the big fat beneficiary. But you know what? Well, I met with a client the other day where I had a, had a really good idea. What's that? He said he's going to make sure that every child gets exactly the same amount of money, but what he's going to do is put an ATM on his mausoleum, and it, it, you know, maximum two hundred dollars withdrawal a day. <laughs> So that way, each of his children will have to come and see him every day for the rest of their lives in order to get their inheritance. <laughs> I love that. We should, we should add that as a service. That's a brilliant idea. The last thing to think about is, and it's a big one, is just considering the tax implications of your estate. Right? There's so many things you can do proactively to make sure that your assets go from one generation to the next with the least amount of government partnership. These are the things you definitely have to think about ahead of time. You know, Ra, you're absolutely right, because this is where planning becomes a living breathing strategy. It's an ongoing process. It can't be just some book that you get from a wirehouse or from some stockbroker insurance agent. It's got to be something that you review every year that you update because last I checked, those people down in Washington, seems like their job is to keep the accountants and the attorneys in business. And you and I have to pay attention to help our clients every year because things change so subtly and so quickly. You need a plan. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free, and you can download it right now by texting the word BULLISH. That's BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's texting the word BULLISH to 555-888. You can download our latest guide, five ways to maximize your retirement accounts, just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com. Feeling beaten down by complex numbers and fees? I must break you. Work out those financial muscles with the team at Payne Capital Management. So, Bob, as you and I know, sometimes being a good advisor means having to address some more uncomfortable topics with our clients so that we could discuss how we help our clients navigate some of these tougher conversations and really plan appropriately. And one of the big ones is... What if you aren't on God's green earth and your spouse now has to deal with your assets? This isn't fun to talk about, but you need to address it. You know, I just points out to the the whole process of planning. I don't care if you're 30, in your 40s, in your 50s, your 60s, or you're an old dog like me in your (laughs) mid-60s. You know, this is planning is so critical and you have to have these tough conversations. You know, I have the hindsight and so do you now 
of having helped people over the last 45 years and things that you talked about back then that didn't seem so important in your 40s are absolutely critical now. And one of them is what happens to your spouse if she or he has to suddenly start managing the portfolio. Yeah, and I think this is really dangerous for you to do it yourselfers, right? You might be great right. at managing your portfolio, love the stock market, but your spouse probably has no interest. And the worst thing you can do is lay on your spouse in a time of grieving is having to deal with all your different accounts at different places, all those stock positions that you're watching on a daily basis. It really puts them in a very bad position. And that's why this is something you want to be proactive about, really not reactive about. You know, and it's not your fault. You might have an uninterested spouse. They just don't care about finance or the stock market or income. All they want to do is just live their lives. So what your responsibility is to your spouse is to put everything in a position where they can pick it up immediately if you're no longer here. And that's where our 360 financial portal is so critical to our client success in, in investing. Yeah, we just talked about this last segment, but that's such a great point because it's like you probably have accounts everywhere and you've got to change those passwords now like monthly. I can't even keep track of all my passwords. Imagine your spouse trying to get in all these accounts later. And to your point, Bob, having like a 360 portal or place where all the assets are listed, they're updated on a daily basis. That makes your life so much simpler for your family if, God forbid, you're not on God's green earth. You know, another thing people are in denial about, Ryan, and what comes to long-term planning is long-term care. What happens if nursing home care is needed? And when you're young and fit and have a lot of vigor, you don't really think about that. But as we said in the last segment, you know, a lot of people are going to need long-term care. You're going to need, you're going to need home care. That's a tough conversation to have for people. It really is, and it's probably one of the most critical things you need to be factoring into your portfolio now because because we're living longer, the odds of needing some sort of nursing care are going to be a lot greater. And again, you've got to put your portfolio under the stress test. What does it look like if you have a lot of these ancillary medical expenses? Is it going to affect your lifestyle long term? And these, again, are things you need to get ahead of. You don't want to wait and find out at that time you don't have enough money. That's a scary place to be. You know, right. It's not like when you're nan and pop or at a nursing home. Your mom could drive right up. It was, you know, right around the corner. Your your aunts could help out. You know, we're, we're going to be in Florida. Mom and I were talking about this the other day. So you, you think Ryan will buy a private jet and fly down and take care of us when we're in a nursing home? And I, I, I said you would, but, you know, your mom didn't think that was going to happen. I wanted to talk about that. Maybe we need to purchase that for paying capital management. We needed our own private jet. Obviously, we can't afford a private jet, but you know what? You can't afford not to make sure that you put money aside for nursing home. You can't depend on your children. Not that they don't love you, but you know everybody lives in different places now. It's a, it's a much different society than it was just a, just a generation ago. Yeah, and I think another tough conversation to have on top of that is when are you going to stop working? And you might think like, I'm never going to stop working because I love my job. But what if you can't work anymore? Are you able to retire? I think that's a big question. It's one you need to know the answer to now, not again when something happens to you and you can't work. Well, one of the things we've learned in the last 10 years, Ry, is that retirement's a dirty word. You know, when you're talking to a lot of these <laughs> baby boomers, people like me, we don't want to retire, but what, you know what we want? We want financial independence. Yes, that's exactly right. So it's about financial independence. It's not necessarily about traditional retirement anymore because look at you, Dad. You said to me, you never want to stop working, and that was the best thing I've ever heard. No, wait a minute. I told you I did want to retire. You told me I couldn't. I forget what the reason was. Oh, but, oh. Maybe I misunderstood um, the conversation. But I think, you know, I, I think the whole goal is, is, you know, have this big pile of go to hell money. So if you don't like your boss, you don't like the company anymore, the place you work has become too corporate, you know, you control your destiny. If you like working, you want to stay there and you're valuable and you, that's your hobby. Well, you can. But, you know, you don't want to be dependent on a paycheck when you get into your 60s and 70s. You want to be financially independent. And that's really the key you know, making those decisions early. And what makes going to work even better than knowing you don't have to be there anymore? It's great to be there because <laughs> you want to be there, but if you don't have to, that's a very empowering feeling. And the other thing, Bob, I think it becomes a tougher conversation is you realize you're coming into a different phase of life. You have more complex mm -hmm. issues like we're talking about now, more financial planning type issues like nursing home expenses. When I'm going to stop working and your old school broker might not deal with these issues and it might be time to say... It's time for me to move on. Hard conversation. Well, here's how you know, right? It's, it's really not a tough conversation because, you know, if you have a, if you sit there right now, you look in your files and you don't have a wealth projection, you don't have any type of analysis that shows what you're going to look like every year financially for the rest of your life. You know, what's your income stream going to be from passive sources like Social Security and pension? Is your portfolio going to generate the income you need to fill that income gap? Well, you have a stockbroker. You know, you have some salesman working for you. You need a planner. You need somebody who's a fiduciary who's going to focus on the issues. 
Yeah, and don't feel bad because realistically, you're probably still paying through the nose for services you're not getting. And I think that was an amazing thing. I had a couple come in, you know, several million dollars only a couple weeks ago, and they almost fell on the floor when they saw that we did financial projections. I'm like, you have three different advisors no one ever mentioned. I mean, they're they're not they're not old, but they're in their mid fifties. They are thinking about retirement in the next couple of years, but no one even talked to them about running some sort of financial projections to see that they could retire at some point. No game plan whatsoever. In- insane. You know, it's not even yeah, and it's not even just about having the right plan. It's about wealth creation. I'm contributing enough to my 401k. I got enough in there to get the match from the company. Why should I maximize it? Well, when you do these wealth projections, go through the exercise of actually looking at, you know, the impact, the decisions you make today, 30, 40, 50 years from now, you know, it's really simple to make those correct decisions. And you know what I know, Rye, it's the compounding of interest and dividends that, that creates all the wealth in your portfolio. The small tweaks have a big, big impact, and that's the key to really good financial planning. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so it's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844 752 6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I call it the biggest offenders of offering obscene, profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So Bob, you and I scour like every outlet every week from the financial media. And what did you find out this week that was just horrifying to you that you had to talk about here on our illustrious show? Well, Ryan, you know what? I didn't find bad news. I found some really good news, some great information. First of all... They talked about Black Friday, right? Did you go out on Black Friday? Did you get all your shopping done? I mean, I'm more of a modern man, so I I wait for Cyber Monday now so I don't have to go anywhere. I can do everything from the convenience of my computer at home. So Black Friday has become replaced in terms of importance as an indicator for the market and for the economy by Cyber Monday. But it's not even Cyber Monday anymore, right? Now it's ballooned into Cyber Week. Now, that has to be a sign of a really strong economy, in my opinion, Bob. You know, we're hearing all these things about how we might go into a recession. But man, we're talking about Cyber Week. That's a lot of days for Americans to shop. And last time I looked, the American consumer drives this economy. And that's why it's done so well for the last decade. Well, I know you don't like to go out on Black Friday because it means you got to leave your cushy apartment. Yeah, I'm hoping that you shopped all Cyber Week because I'm looking for, you know, a big holiday season this year. <laughs> I'll make a note of that. Well, it's funny this week. I mean, it is Cyber Week and there's a lot going on in retail. But the bigger news that's been out there is tariff news, right? I mean, we look like we we're going to get a trade deal with China. Now we're not going to get a trade deal with China. Markets sold off a little bit. Everybody's getting panicky. And there's this big underlying belief that these tariffs are just going to shut our economy down. And as you and I know, that's not necessarily true. Well, it's it's just all an example of how markets work, right? When something becomes well-known, it's already priced into the market. You can't time these things. They don't don't give you an edge, does it, right? It does give you an edge. But the other thing is, I think what we don't talk about enough is these tariffs are extremely small when you start looking at the overall size of the U.S. economy, which is like $21 trillion. When you're talking about a couple... I don't know, 30, 40, maybe $50 billion, it's really not that big a deal. Yeah, when you, when you think about billions versus trillions, when you have a $80 trillion global GDP, think about that number, $80 trillion. Yeah, tariffs don't really make a big deal. So I guess, you know, when you hear the, the, the financial media tell you to sell in May and go away or that, you know, I'm not going to invest until the last week of December to take advantage of the January effect, Right. Do any things actually work, right? Is Santa Claus coming to town? Is, is Santa Claus calling, you know, on Wall Street this year? We're going to have a big rally. I mean, does all that stuff factor in when you're investing? 
I mean, it, it doesn't, but I will say the Santa Claus rally is actually a true thing because between Thanksgiving and the end of the year, the market's averaged about 1.6% on the positive. So seasonality, if you really want to get into it, Bob, is actually usually pretty good this time of year. But I would never make an investment decision based on that premise for the record. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I remember last year on Christmas Eve sitting by the phone for the first time in my career. 45 years I've been doing this. And Christmas Eve, people calling me because the market was down almost 20% last December. What happened to Santa Claus last year? You take a vacation? Well, it doesn't work every year, but now you have everyone talking about how the market is definitely going to go down because it did last year. But that's one year, and that's not the norm. So you have to keep that in mind as well. So don't postpone your investment decisions because you think we're going to have this cataclysmic you know, sell-off like we did last December. Historically, that's actually not the case. It's a very rare occurrence. And I think that the great lesson from this article was that basically markets operate, time passes, as I always say. It really doesn't care what you think or feel. And if you think you have an edge, everybody else, there's millions and millions of investors looking for an edge. They're reading the same thing. So everything you know, everybody else knows. So the key is put the market, stay in the market, stay invested, invest in your goals. Don't, don't try and, and use these gimmicks you know, to get an edge. Yeah, and this is something we talk about all the time, but right now it's more critical than ever because we see, as a lot of you come into our office, you're sitting on so much money in cash because you don't know what to do. Oh. You, you see the headlines, and cash is trash. You're earning nothing right now, and a solid diversified portfolio, and we talk about this in our offer, is generating a lot of current income, the kind of income you're going to need for retirement, and you really can't ignore that right now. You've got to get on your plan now. You can't wait for all this dust to settle or this noise to go away because it's never going to go away. There's always going to be a new dramatic issue in the markets the media is going to conjure up and you really got to ignore it. And right now more than ever, I mean, all this stuff about the trade war, slowing manufacturing, you know, this is really noise. It's not really that critical. Yeah, right, right. It is noise. It's like uh, it's to distract you away from doing what's right. I mean, I sat down with an accountant, two of his clients are huge contractors in the in New Jersey. And they were so proud of themselves because they each had $4 million sitting in cash and they were getting 1.8% from the local bank. I was so tempted the other day to take a picture in front of one of these banks with an advertisement saying 1.8% and saying something along the lines of, this sucks. But I don't want to say that. So- <laughs> <laughs> no, that would, we don't want to say that. But, you know, but, but it isn't good when your investment net of inflation yeah. is zero, when you're going backwards. And that's the thing that you know, they don't tell you about, that insidious hidden tax called inflation that's impacting every return you have. Well, it's really simple math because if you're getting 1.8%. Remember, you still have to pay taxes on that money. So now you're getting closer to maybe 1%, but cost of living is going up by closer to 2% every year. And remember, every 20 years, your purchasing power is cut in half. So every million dollars you have today is worth a half a million dollars. It's an anti-investment, Bob. You're actually losing money against the cost of living. That's not investing. No, it's not, Ryan. That's what I love about these financial pundits and the financial propaganda articles. They're all telling us, we just had 10 years of phenomenal market with the longest expansion in history. We have the greatest bull market in history. It's 10 years. And guess what? Next year, it can't go up because it's already going up. I mean, I, that's conventional wisdom. And when that's already the conventional wisdom, guess what's going to happen next year? These are very good odds. Not that we can predict the future. The market will probably go higher just because everyone's predicting something else. But that's, again, not how you want to invest your money. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. If you qualify, here's what you can expect. We're going to look at everything from taxes. Have you optimized your financial plan for taxes? We're going to show you how to save on taxes so there's more money in your pocket, not the government's. We're going to look at income. Income is so much more reliable than the ups and downs of the market. We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. What hidden risks do you have in your portfolio you don't know about? We're going to show you how to bulletproof and safeguard your portfolio, protect it for retirement. To see if you qualify, simply text the words free financial review to 844 752 6692. That's the words free financial review and text them to 844-752-6692. See if you qualify for our holistic total financial master plan. Hey, thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on the show, 
Check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting BeBullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, Be Bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.